What's going on everybody, it's your boy Jimmy James 59 and I got a little bit of a different video for you today. Gonna be thinking about the playability, right? How easy or difficult it is to play the new civilizations. There's a couple reasons that I'm doing this. The first one is that the new civilizations are very unique. They have some pretty unique tech trees and bonuses and even units that we have not really seen before. So it's worth thinking about how to actually play these civs and whether it's difficult to do so. The second reason is that this channel has always been kind of themed around focusing on like the intermediate level gameplay down to even like the low level gameplay and not that the kinds of things we discussed and the principles that are discussed here don't have an impact on the high level. Uh, they do because oftentimes being really good at something is really about mastering the basics or the fundamentals, but players at a high level often can can do things efficiently and effectively so that sometimes that means that certain civs become really overpowered in a way that it's not at a lower elo level and some civilizations can become really underpowered right if you watch a high level game versus say an intermediate level game it almost seems sometimes like the units even move in a different way and i guess suppose in some ways they do because the higher level players are a bit more effective and efficient and at intermediate level you're, you have people who are really good at the game, but are still working on some of those, some of those, not just the, the actual gameplay macro themselves, but a lot of times it's the macro. It's actually strategy, decision making, that sort of thing. That's a, that's a huge part of the game. And I think it's one of the things that takes a long time to learn. So we're going to be thinking about all, all of those things in today's video. And I just say, if you like this kind of content, like the video, follow, subscribe on the channel, right? That way you always get notified when I got a video coming out and I got, I got a lot of videos coming at you. So let's go ahead and get this thing started thinking about the Bengalis. <laughs> So Bengalis are interesting. I think that one of the things that, to consider with them is that you're going to have a pretty generic Dark Age. And so on the one hand, that can help you because if you know the standard builds and if you are kind of getting into that intermediate level of play, you probably do have the standard builds pretty down pat by this point. That's going to make Bengalis in some ways easier to play. But on the other hand, what it's going to mean is that if you're up against some of those really aggressive civilizations, it might feel like you need to play a bit more defensively. Now, when you get a little bit later on into Castle Age, that's where the civilization I think gets really awkward for low to mid elo players because you don't have knights and you don't have camels. And that's pretty tough, I think, right? You have light cavalry, which you can fully upgrade to the end of the game, which is nice but you're really funneled into going into elephants and that's something that i think we're all still trying to figure out and it's a unit that does take a lot of economy and that's hard i think now with bengalis at least you're getting some civ bonuses to where you can try to keep those elephant units alive by taking less bonus damage and being more resistant to conversion but that's not going to make your elephants invincible. So it's still a pretty tricky situation. Now, one of the things that is nice about Bengalis with, for intermediate level play is that you do get Arbalist, but you don't have Thumb Ring. So you can struggle a bit on the flank in terms of DPS in, in team games, and that's really difficult. But in 1v1s, right, if you're looking for a unit that you know and are familiar with, you can go for the Arbalist. Just know that if you're up against a high-level archer, archer civilization, you might struggle. Now, the unique unit of this civilization that gets a lot, has gotten a lot of attention is the Ratha, a cavalry archer class unit, but that can transition back and forth between melee and range damage. I think if you're at a intermediate level, it's going to take a lot of practice to learn how to handle. It's slower than knights, so you can't really hit and run like you do with cav archers. It is countered by skirmishers, even when it's in melee mode, but you can still transition to melee mode and at least dive on skirmishers and kill them quickly. So it, I think I think skirmishers go from being kind of a hard counter to more of a soft counter in that situation. And given that you're, you're probably needing to change range and melee attack, you're really liable to misclick. So 
I think you really got it's a unit that you're gonna want to practice with, but I do I do think it's pretty hard to play for for intermediate level players. Now I think in the late game, the civilization is pretty good. And I think that's where their eco bonus is really, really coming into play because their eco bonus where you get two villagers per town center when you age up, that means you're going to get two extra villagers in feudal age and in castle age because you're probably only going to have, you should in most cases only have one town center. It's actually a good economic bonus, right? I don't want to discount it. And the great thing about it for low to mid elo players is that it's very passive. So great, you just get two villagers and you don't have to do anything different. That's really nice, right? The only thing, you might want to make sure that you don't get housed on Arena or something like that, you know, if you're trying to fast castle. But but regardless, right, it's, it's you know, a pretty passive bonus. What's really giving you a lot of value is that if you have, like, four town centers or five town centers going into Imperial Age, boom, that's ten extra villagers. That's really, really good. Um, so it can get you a lot of value at different phases in the game. And I think that's where Bengali's really profile from... A strategy perspective it's really designed to be a late game powerhouse civilization i think the issue with it is just that you're going to be a powerhouse civilization with units that for the most part are really unfamiliar so you can get to some comps that you might like with the civilization that you know um if you substitute say the rathas for cav archers for instance and you play something like Rotha Light Cav as a combination, that's not bad. You do get Halberdiers, though you're missing less armor upgrades, so you can play Arbalist Halberdier, though your arms are going to be a bit weaker, and your Halbs are not going to be as tanky, so that's a little bit tough too. And you can go with Elephant Archers, they do have really strong Elephant Archers in the late game, getting all the armor upgrades, Parthian Tactics, Bloodlines, etc. I think Elephant Archers are a really, really nice late game unit for the Civilization, but again, if you're low to mid elo, you probably don't know how to play those units because they're so new, right? It's not it's nobody's fault, right? Unless you've been playing with Indian Elephant Archers for a long time, and uh, we'll talk about that a bit later. So, where I think the civilization actually falls in this is that I think for 1v1 mid-elo playability, it's probably about two and a half stars. I think that there's a lot that makes it kind of difficult to play from whether it's falling behind in terms of having a generic Dark Age, whether it's having really limited options in the mid game and relying on units that you're probably not as familiar with, right? I think it's a little bit tougher to play, but if you can get to late game, you will find that you at least have some options that you know. Now, I think in terms of a team game, I think this is probably a pretty bad team game unless you're maybe on a closed map and you can easily get to something like the Rotha, which again, you're going to have to figure out how to, to play and balance, um, you know. The Rotha is a difficult unit, I think. I think it's a strong unit. I want to emphasize that I think the Rotha has uh, is actually a really nice unit. I think it's just a hard unit to to play if you're not uh, if you don't have a certain skill level of the game. And so I think ultimately, right, it gives them about one and a half stars for team games. It doesn't really fit on the flank, and it doesn't really fit in the pocket either. So that's a combined score of two stars. I think Bengalis are kind of a tough sim to play. <laughs> Okay, next up we have Dravidians, and Dravidians have some fantastic openings, so it's kind of like the opposite of Bengalis in a lot of ways. Um, getting the free wood when you get to the next age means that you can kind of budget for that and do some really aggressive archer rush, men at arms. You can even do pretty aggressive scout openings as well, right? I actually have some Dravidian build orders on this channel, right? I'll, I'll link uh, uh, I'll link at least one of them in as the video that follows this one. And not only that, but in Feudal Age, right, your Skirmishers are going to fire 25% faster. So you have a lot of really nice bonuses that actually make the Dravidians a strong civilization in Feudal Age. And if you're a really aggressive player, this is a Civ that you're going to like. And it's very strong in that era. Castle Age is where things get really awkward. Um, you don't have any Knights or Camels. Your stable is really bad with no Bloodlines or Husbandry. So... You can't really do anything if you do open scouts in the early game. You can't really upgrade them for any, for any reason. You're really funneled into playing either foot archers into right, with crossbows. And you can use that free wood upgrade to get some, to get like fast ballistics or maybe, uh, you know, uh, make sure you get to two TCs and not, and not slow down archer production. Other than that, you do have the elephant archer 
uh as it has a bonus actually that they fire faster and you do get thumb ring so i do think elephant archers are a really nice option with this civilization if say you're uh opening scouts and you want to go for some kind of elephant archer skirmisher sort of combo forward siege that kind of thing i think elephant archers are an option i think missing bloodlines on them is not a big a deal so when you miss bloodlines on knights because bloodlines increases the hp of knights by like 20 percent going from 100 to 120 and for elephant archers it's like maybe eight or nine um it's not having near the impact for elephant archers and you do have a castle age tech that can allow your elephant units to regenerate hp so again i think that's one of those things i think at a low to mid elo level that can be really helpful uh, just because the fights can get kind of sloppy and maybe drawn out because of a lack of an efficiency so you might actually wind up gaining a bit of hp that way for your elephant archers in late castle early imperial age um but i think the problem with dravidians really comes in the imperial age they're very very underpowered you really can't even go light cav with them you're really funneled into like some combination of archers and infantry maybe like arbalist halberdier with their infantry tech the woot steel tech you can you can actually get really really good uh halberdiers because they ignore armor even your light cap actually could be low-key good against units that have lots of melee armor and when i say low-key good i mean more that they might be cost effective as opposed to actually helping you achieve your objectives right it could be something to mix in because you know just researching light cav and uh having something i don't know there's something there but you're just you're just funneled into really one army comp and you just don't have a lot of options it's really either arbalist or elephant archers with the civilization because your battle elephants at the stable are not going to have nearly enough upgrades and be way too expensive so yeah it's just tough um i think for team games i'd give this civ four out of five stars i mean it really you know, you can use that 200 wood to get fast ballistics, get another range up, so many things, and get up at really early times. And that's very helpful in team games, even though you don't get any direct foot archer bonuses. Um, and you tend not to see skirmishers in that many team games. However, in 1v1s, I would give the Civilization three stars. I think that it gets a lot of credit for playability of its opening because you don't have to do anything that differently and if you just go in if you just if you just go in and modify your build a little bit i think you'll be able to get some really nice builds and not fall behind in the early game which is really important but as you get to late game it's a real struggle and i think this civilization is probably in whatever the next balance patch is i think it's probably going to have some work done to make sure that it can actually compete in the late game so that's going to be four three that's going to be three and a half stars total i think it's a fun sip to play at an intermediate level but you just need to know that at least in your 1v1s uh it, it tape it tapers off pretty quickly into into mid to late castle age i think <laughs> Right, next up we have the Gurjaras, and I think the Gurjaras are the most unique of all the civilizations. You start off with forest, forage bushes, storing sheep in the mill, etc. I think for low to mid elo players, the Gurjaras is very, very difficult to play. And here's why. So, and I'll contrast it with the Dravidians. The Dravidians, you know you're getting that 200 wood when you age up. So once you kind of get your build, you know, and where you're gonna apport, where you're gonna allocate your villagers and you kind of know what you want to do there it's pretty easy right it's not that difficult for gajaras storing sheep in the mill at some point you need to release them in order to like keep eating them once say you've run out of your forage bushes and you've got your boars in and it's a really nice bonus because it saves you a lot of wood i think it reminds me a lot of the tatars bonus right because you're getting in a way you're getting extra lasting sheep you just start delaying actually consuming them Whereas Tatars, right, they just have more food on them. So, it's a nice eco bonus, and but having to deal with ungarrisoning your sheep and doing it one at a time to make it more optimized, so you're still getting some benefit. I just think it makes it really, really awkward to play. I think this is one of these bonuses that in the hands of a really good player 
is a very strong Dark Age, early Feudal Age bonus because they have that efficient kind of macro. But I think we're at an intermediate level. You might actually find that you have forgotten to release some sheep or you need to release more than just say like one or two of them so that that way your villagers at the town center don't go idle so it's pretty tough and the other thing about it is that it's really starting to wear off probably around the mid game when economies are producing more food and eight sheep in a mill it's just not giving you giving you that much now where the sieve is a bit different i think than dravidians or bengalis who start to run out of options especially at the stable and castle age with Gajaras, everything opens up right you have well i actually need to backtrack in the feudal age for a bit you start with a camel scout which is really unique and is quite a good unit but it is a bit harder to get it going because it costs the same as a camel rider because when you get to castle age you upgrade into a camel rider so you can actually with Gajaras do some really cool things where you're actually you could be massing camel scouts during the transition from feudal to castle and get them immediately and so have more camel riders than you otherwise might have and that's a really interesting strategy they don't train very quickly but the Gajaras have a team bonus that actually allows camels and elephants to train quicker so it's pretty interesting now but also in castle age right you're getting you have camels you have a unique unit the shravamsha rider which is a light cavalry unit that basically absorbs archer attacks at least temporarily it's a really interesting unit but i think it's really really tough to play because when i've seen it work or felt it work right you have to go really all in with it and that's something that you have to be very committed to as a low to mid elo player and that level of commitment and being able to force damage out of them i, I think is really difficult so um, you're probably going to be making camels uh, and it is worth noting that your mounted units do extra bonus damage that's very nice for your camels I mean you're just going to wreck night sieves with the civilization and it's worth noting too that you also get fully upgraded crossbows in castle age so you can play into that army comp if that's something you're going for and getting to something like camel crossbow can be a really nice option now in the late game right you have a really mobile army, and I think that that's pretty helpful on open maps. And the kind of like weird units like elephant archers that you're probably not used to using with Gurjaras, they're not that great anyway, so you probably aren't even going to making them. You're probably going to stay on camel, on other camels, or you could go to the castle and get the chakram thrower, which I think for low to mid elo players is going to be a bit easier to think about because. It really profiles like a like a Gabedo or a throwing axeman, and you might already have experience with those units, except that it's doing pass-through damage. I think the Shockham Thrower is an insane unit right now. Um, I've seen some games where it seems to alone be able to bring a a, a Kachara player who's behind and get them back in the game. And I think in general what the Kajaras do well is cover their weaknesses. And so the Chakram Thrower is a really, really nice option for them. Now, they do have their limitations, right? No Knights is a big limitation, but they also don't have the Pikeman upgrade. And so that is, that's, that's, that's pretty hard to deal with because as a low to mid elo player, you're probably using Pikeman more than you are, say, Monks. Monks tend to be featured much, much more at around a higher level of gameplay. And so that's a major loss. And, you know, you don't get champion. You miss blast furnace with the sieve. <laughs> it is interesting that with their castle age tech that reduces the food cost in their units, you can get two-handed swordsmen without blast furnace that are 30 food, 20 gold. I'm sure there's some meme strategies in there, but you're probably not winning with that at a low to mid elo level. So in the end, I would say that, I would say that for team games, they are they're pretty strong in fact i'd give them something like four and a half stars I think the extra mounted bonus damage allows them to churn through knights quickly and so maybe you'll have more left over to actually attack archers you can get more melee armor with the frontier guards tech and imperial age that can help you as well fight against uh fight against melee units it's nice 
And I think that with with Gurjaras or a sieve that you're gonna see in your team games, and so you're gonna want to know how to play them. Now, so I give them four and a half stars for team games. I think that for one v ones, I would give them about three and a half stars for playability. I just think, and that and that is more due to the fact that I think the start is just very weird, and I think in Dark Age, Early Feudal Age. You're probably going to really struggle, but if you can get out of that, or if you, or if you're at least willing to not optimize the sieve, and I think that that's probably the way. Unfortunately, as you're getting used to it, you want to play it is to just make sure that you release instead of you know releasing sheep one at a time, maybe release them two at a time, so that way you're not causing your macro to slip up. And I think that's the probably the best way at a mid elo level, and maybe build up to the optimization. So. Missing Knights, I think, hurts, but you have enough options, and that's what I think the Gurjaras does. I think that they have enough options to cover their bases, and so I'll give them three and a half stars in terms of in terms of their intermediate level playability, and that's four stars total. Okay, Hindustanis, right? So the Hindustanis used to be known as the Indians, so they're a civilization we know a lot about. But they've been massively redesigned, so there's also a lot to learn. And let me go into this. So their economic bonus is fantastic. One of the best in the game. Cheaper Villagers gives you a really, really flexible opening. It's passive, so you can go up earlier if you want, or you can just go up standard and have a lot of extra food. Now, they've also had their team bonus redone. And your camels now do plus two damage against buildings, so that's been cut in half. But the light cavalry line is also doing plus two damage. And that's fantastic, actually, I think. Uh, the camels really don't suffer from it. I'll tell you about more of that in a second. But for feudal play, if you're going scouts, you can actually really make it more difficult for your opponent to wall up because you're going to be able to get through buildings quicker. And that, I think that's going to really help this civilization. So that'll be good. And it's really just sort of helping your gameplay, not doing anything different. Now, as the game goes on, your villager bonus gets better and better, so your eco is just improving. And camel riders, right now, they attack faster, so they don't have the extra the pierce armor. They attack faster now. I think it's a great change because having the one extra pierce armor, and so they would they used to have three pierce armor in Castle Age. I just don't think that was enough to deal with crossbows, which were still a really good counter to them. And having the extra attack in some ways is better because now you're actually doing more damage to those units. And that would be a really, really interesting comparison to look at because absorbing a little bit more archer, uh, absorbing a little bit more archer fire versus actually possibly being able to kill archers quicker. It's an interesting comparison. Now, so again, that's passive. Hey, you're just gonna notice that your camels are doing better. Now, you know what we gotta talk about is the gulam. And the Gulam is basically a Huskarl impersonator, right? It's a little bit quicker. It has a little bit less base attack and bonus damage to archers, which it does have. But it's doing pass-through damage. So again, that's not something you really have to micro differently. And because it's so fast and it has a cost that's similar to an Eagle Warrior, costing 30 food, 45 gold, right? So it's kind of in that in that vein. The Huskarl, the, excuse me, the Gulam can really be thought as kind of a mix between Eagle Warriors and and Huskarls, right? They're kind of a they're kind of right in the middle there. It's a unit that in Castle Age holds up even pretty well against long swords, which you don't usually see in Castle Age anyways. And it'll get wrecked by cavalry. Oh, excuse me. It'll get wrecked by cavalry, similar to an eagle. It'll get wrecked by champion, similar to an eagle, right? So but it's gonna be very, very effective against archers. Now in the late game with Hindustanis, right, you have some good options now, and the Gulam is really important because I think the uh you know, the sort of older version of the Civ really struggled against archers. Some things that are worth taking note of, you don't have Parthian tactics anymore for your Cav archers. So that's going to be not the same kind of option that it was in late game from times earlier. And now your hand cannoneers have been really buffed. The Shatani tech gives two range now. You have plus one melee and pierce armor as a Civ bonus. I think hand cannoneers are kind of difficult to play into at an intermediate level because... You can't mask them through the ages, and so you really have to be have to be on point in terms of 
getting a mass of them, making sure you research chemistry as early as possible, having the ranges up to really crank them out because you can easily be caught not having enough units while you're tra trying to transition to them and you can lose games that way in Imperial Age. Um, so that's something to think about. I think in team games for the late game, the Caravan Sorry, their new, uh, their new building has a lot of potential. Basically what it does, you put them along your trade route, it speeds up your trade carts, it heals them as well. And again, that's pretty passive. So you just put them down and I think that's going to help a lot. So I think for 1v1s, Hindustanis are a civilization um, that... Actually, let me do team games first. I think for team games, they're really good. Um, there's no substitute for the night line, but the Car Caravan Sorry will give you a really, really good team game advantage and so i'd give them four and a half out of five stars for team games um because again the caravan sorry is going to help out the whole team and that matters a lot because oftentimes in team games which sometimes tend to go late being able to be the team that ransacks your enemy's trade that wins and loses team games and so having a defense against that's really cool for one of the ones i think this is a civilization that just has such a smooth eco you now have an answer to archer civilizations with the Ghulam. You have, or you have, a, you have an even better answer, I think, to cavalry civilizations with the the camels now that attack faster. The imperial upgrade, the imperial camel upgrade is cheaper now, so you're a problem for cavalry civilizations. And if you're dealing with infantry civilizations, which again, infantry tend to show up early and later in, in the game. You have really great hand cannoneers too. And so you have all of the options there. And even your heavy cab archers are still pretty usable. You just, they're just probably better now as a raiding unit and a fire support unit way, way, way kind of in the back. You, you really got to, you got to babysit them probably a little bit more now because they're not going to have the durability since they missed Parthian tactics. But you just have everything with the civilization, I think now. Um, and you know what units you're going to have to go for. There's no substitute for missing knights. So I'm going to also give that civilization four and a half stars for four and a half stars total. So. Anyways, that's my list, right? I hope this video gives you a sense of where you might need to adjust your gameplay or focus your gameplay in order to try to optimize these civilizations and learn them. I'm still trying to learn them myself and part of this is based on my experience and playing with them so i hope you enjoyed this video and again if you uh enjoyed this video go ahead like it follow the channel I've got a lot more content coming out and with that i'm james james 59 and i'll see you out there in the ladder peace mm -hmm.